and Dementia Talks and uh, welcoming you to today's discussion. One of the questions that I've been asked and uh, I kind of have left a gap is how did I find out that I had dementia? I also want to, uh, during this, I'm going to address how I've learned how other people have found out they have dementia. And so maybe I'll help fill in some of the gaps uh, that people are having around um, how do I go about finding out if I have dementia or don't, um, or if I just am uh, suffering from aging, or maybe um, I have selective memory according to your spouse. Um, so. Anyway, um, let's start with um, how it happened for me, and I'll try to add in where I know other people have um, had challenges getting through this process. So for me, I started realizing that I had cognitive impairment um, a few years before I retired. Um, and I talked to my doctor about it, and he put me on... Um, Aricep, which is a medication for people that have Alzheimer's, a uh, low dose, and uh, with the idea that take it for a while, let's see if it helps, and uh, we'll come back and visit again. Well, in, in between that time and when I actually saw my doctor again, we moved from Philadelphia to South, back to South Bend, Indiana, or Granger. Um, and, and anybody who has moved um, knows that one of the pains that you go through is finding new doctors. You not only have to find them, but then you have to get your initial visits and you have to go through all of their questions and things. And uh, for me, I had to find um, an ear, ear, nose, and throat doctor. I had to find a cardiologist. I had to find a gastroenterologist. And I also needed to find my physician. So, you know, before you, in going through all of that, um, uh, my physician, uh, Dr. Hayes, um, after he learned that I was struggling with my um, cognitive memory, um, he kept me on the same medication for a little while, and then when I, I asked again, you know, should we increase the dose, he said, you know, before we go on and we increase that dose, let's just uh, get, do an MRI of your brain. Um, did the MRI, and the MRI came back with that I had damage to the brain uh, in what they call white matter damage. White matter is just a nickname that they give in MRIs that it stands for where there's not normal brain tissue, an MRI shows it up as white. Um, there's a lot of things that can cause it. One of the things is MS. Um, it can be caused by vasculitis. It can be caused by Lewy body. There's a number of diseases that cause white matter to show up in the MRI. Uh, so as you can imagine, that started um, once that was found and that's on the MRI report, you know, the next step was finding or getting me scheduled with a neurologist. Um, during that time, I was having terrible problems with migraines. Uh, migraines. I was down for uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 days a month that I just couldn't come out of the light. I had to stay in the bedroom where it was dark. Um, I had terrible headaches. Um, and, um, so, you know, his focus was, well, let's get focused on helping you with that first, and then we'll deal with the other. Um, you know, I'm panicking because I'm hearing that I have something that's caused damage to my brain, and he's worried about my migraines, but I, I go looking back, I understand what he was trying to do. He was trying to address something that, that he could fix right away. And I will say that it took quite a while just to address that. So we went through a lot of different medications. Um, I finally got, um, after all those medications failed, um, I got, I went to, um, he prescribed Emgality, which is by Eli Lilly. And that's in a shot form. And as soon as I took, um, Emgality, my migraines went away. So oh, I, I know that's a, there's different people. They, we looked at Botox and all that. And I really was not crazy about the idea of Botox. 
and um, but other people have tried other medications. This one worked for me. After that happened, then obviously the next focus was on okay, let's what else is going on? What is causing this white matter? Um, and, and actually during this time, we so he started scheduling me for other tests. One of the tests was a spinal tap, and I actually ended up having two because to find out if you have MS, um, you, you need to compare the fluid in your spine versus in your your, your blood and the rest of your body, and um, that's where the t one of the telltale signs of MS shows up. Um, I've later learned that that's not an absolute, not the way my doctor in South Bend thought it was, uh, but Cleveland's clinic says absolutely not but anyway that's the differences you get when you talk with different doctors uh, so we did the spinal tap that didn't the first one um, this the fluid the, the blood leaked into the fluid and I ended up having to have it redone yippee um, and both times I had terrible headaches that went with it um, they also then after that was disproven then I went for looked at vasculitis uh, in um, they did a, um, uh, a test for vasculitis where they send a cam camera up through all of your arteries until you get too close to your brain then they release a dye and then uh, they um, they can see then the small vessels in your brain and see if those are having are hemorrhaging which would be like a, a localized form of stroke all of mine were clear, so I didn't have vasculitis, although in the meantime, he had sent me to a vasculitis a stroke specialist um, in Cleveland Clinic. That was my first introduction back to Cleveland Clinic since I had my back surgery back in 93. Um, but um, we still hadn't come to an answer. Um, so the next part was looking at... Um, how my response rate was um, in terms of it was a damage to my spine you know what's causing these kind of things so they did um, an EMG and EK uh, and a number of different other tests including uh, even having my cardiologist check to see if there was a leak in from one valve to another or from one side of my heart to another side of heart that can cause uh, some forms of brain damage uh, none of those were inclusive and at that point um, my doctor decided that he would we were getting outside of his league and he didn't want to make a determination of anything more and he referred me then to he, I could go to Mayo or to Cleveland I chose Cleveland because of its proximity and past experience and uh, when I got to Cleveland then um, the uh, doctor I saw, uh, first doctor I saw, which was Dr. Lee, was a specialist in large and small fiber neuropathy. They ran a bunch of tests, but he asked if we could stay over, and he referred me to another doctor who's a specialist in uh, dementia, and, and particularly um, Lewy body dementia, Dr. McDonald. And so I saw Dr. McDonald. He basically explained the test and things that we we're going to go through and it became uh, that went into a series of trips that we made to Cleveland trying to find the source of both my uh, large fiber neuropathy and also the brain damage uh, 36 trips at this point in all um, and still um, in terms of the large fiber that cause is called idiopathic they do not know what's causing my um, um, disease that's damaging the fibers the insulation on the nerve fibers within my body in my case the myelin which is what is like just like the insulation in on wires um, as it dies, it goes into your bloodstream and then ultimately out uh, through your liver. Mine is nine times higher than the normal, the, the high. Um, so uh, you can see that um, the, you know, this um, uh, 
disease is continuing to go on and that's from the blood test still showing the same type of results um, we still really don't know what the cause is they we're really just treating the symptoms which is a lot of pain this um, ability uh, problems with my walking problems with um, my, some of my organs functioning correctly and those go on uh, the problem is that Lewy body dementia also has some of those problems so are they interrelated are they not I mean we're at some point you have to stop and say I don't really need to know exactly what the cause is um, I need you know just let them treat the symptoms um, because even if they did find the cause it's not like they have a magic pill to fix that problem right there is there's no magic pills and um, so that was my journey on how uh, I got to the initial diagnosis of possibly I might have Lewy body dementia. And then for the diagnosis, they did another MRI, which showed some progression uh, of the damage in my brain. Uh, I did a sleep study because if you have sleep apnea and other things, that's one of the, one of the things on the checklist. Uh, that people have people who have sleep apnea can have brain are prime candidates for Louis of uh, Louis body dementia or Parkinson's the next uh, one next indicator is um, of course a standard test but more importantly they go through a comprehensive test about a three and a half hour test to test your cognitive and long-term and short-term memory um, after all of that's done and they get the results and they've considered what other options there are and I know that I had a team of at least eight doctors looking at me especially when they couldn't figure out what my um, what was causing my um, large fiber and small fiber uh, polyneuropathy um, then you know they don't like to not no they don't like to come back to you and say well we just don't know that's that's not what cleveland clinic i'm sure not what mayo is all about you go there for answers but sometimes the answers uh they're just not there okay so let me stop at this point that got me to february of 2020 just the beginning of covid where I was given a formal diagnosis of Lewy body dementia. Um, let me also now compare what I've learned from other people of what their process was. Um, you're always or more than likely going to start out with your GP, all right, your general uh, practitioner. Um, and whether or not they notice it or not is you know, if they just do the one little test, uh, that's really a poor indicator of whether or not you have it. Plus, you actually need multiple to see how, if there's a change in how you take the test versus you took, say, a year before that. Um, if you're having problems with cognitive memory, and um, then you need to tell your doctor. If you're having problems with long-term memory, um, you need to tell your doctor. Um, and he's not the one who's going to tell you you have dementia. Uh, that needs to come from a qualified neurologist and more, more likely from a specialist, not your local neurologist who does everything from migraines to MS to um, you know, other treatments, Botox and all the rest you know, that go on. Um, they are not the person who you should be depending upon to tell you you have dementia or what kind of dementia you have. You really need to see specialists at places like Cleveland, Northwestern, um, John Hopkins, Mayo. Um, that is where you're going to get a qualified opinion of whether or not you, what type, if you have dementia and what, and where, and what type of dementia you're going to have. So um, that, when you think about that, there is a lot, there is a number of people who I know from my dementia awareness group that I have um, with Tipa Snow that have had literally um, been told that they have this type of dementia and later to be told, you no, know, it's, not, it's not frontal lobe, but we think you have Alzheimer's. And, 
And I'm not saying that that's wrong. It can, you, you, they may not know. They may have made a first opinion on the type of dementia and then want to switch it later as time progresses and the disease progresses. But far too often, people have gone where they declare that they have early onset dementia and what the doctors start moving into is treating that dementia. So... Um, at the end of all of this, um, the doctors are, once they get to a time when the doctors have said, I, you know, I believe you have X, you have Alzheimer's, you have Lewy body, you have frontal lobe, you have vascular um, dementia. At that point, their minds or their focus switches to treatment. And treatment is very, very complex. Uh, because it involves three or four different types of classes of drugs, depending upon the type of dementia that you have, and they have to be in balance, and they have to work with the things that you need. So they're treating your symptoms, but at the same time, they're also working with you around what you can tolerate, what works and what doesn't, and so they don't just immediately give you a full dose of of dopamine if you th they think you have Parkinson's degree degree they give you a small dose to see if that works and then they may ratchet it up a little bit at a time for me they they um, my I was having s seizures or jerks that were causing like I was having 40 of them an hour and um, so they started putting me on um, uh, a medication for that um, gabapentin and by the time we kept ratcheting it up and ratcheting it up to deal with the jerks and the pain that goes along with it i was at the maximum adult dose with no more ability to address what was still going on with me at that point i had to titrate off of that and move to another drug which is lyrica which um works in somewhat the same way, but the dosages are very different and the uh, way that it um, affects you is different in terms of what you can or cannot tolerate. Now, I, I, I somehow can tolerate uh, drugs without any problem. Some people, um, even with Aricept, which is what's used for Alzheimer's or for uh, Lewy body dementia, um, pe some people can't tolerate it at all. Um, I, I also uh, got to the point where it was causing problems for me with my digestive system and I switched to a patch of a different drug. All of this stuff takes time. And, and I don't want to say it there. That I want you to know that if you get a diagnosis, what they are focused on is trying to get to that right treatment so you have a semi-normal life Plus, we're, they're delaying the effects of dementia, right? And that there, there's no cure, but they can help delay the effects and help people live a much more normal life, which is the key to developing your coping mechanisms, to live positively, to, to do all the things that you can do before, um, before dementia becomes too serious. If you wait till the time that dementia comes too serious, you're going to take a lot more drugs and more important, more worse, you're not going to have the coping mechanisms and other life changing processes that put you in control of, of how you handle these drugs and how you handle your shift in your mental capabilities. So um, I hope all of this helps. Uh, there's not just one roadmap. I shared with you my uh, the map of the road that I went through to get to to it, um, obviously very convoluted. I think that that's a common statement for most people. Um, yet it, it involves uh, lots of different doctors, lots of different tests, lots of different um, uh, labs. Uh, it, it's, it's not, nobody can go walk into a a neurologist office and just they're going to come out with it 
a di diagnosis of dementia. And if they do, then they are not um, getting the treatment that they should be. Um, unfortunately, far too many people go into nursing homes and um, or uh, in the do some doctor says, well, I think that they're showing signs of demented behavior. Uh, showing signs of demented behavior which is really old thinking, um, is not um, the sign of dementia. Dementia, it has a specific, all dementia has specific um, signature of how it affects the brain and the body. And in most cases, it ha there's physical damage to the brain. If you don't have physical damage to the brain and MRI, then you probably are just suffering from aging or something else that's causing that quote unquote demented behavior. Um, and quite frankly, there's a lot of misdiagnosis out there. And because people are misdiagnosed and they're mistreated and then we keep building up on the stigma of what dementia really is. So um, that's, an all, that's all for today. I probably have created a conversation that may fire off a lot of questions. I'm more than happy to entertain them. So please leave your questions on Wandering Light um, or on Dementia Talks uh, uh, following in YouTube um, or on Spotify in, uh, for the podcast. And uh, we'll try the answer. I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. If I can't get the answer, um, I'll, tr I'll ref try to refer you to somebody who can give the answer. Again, this is Ted from Dementia Talks and WanderingLight.com. That's WanderingLight, L-I-T-E, dot com. Um, wishing you a very good day.